What you see here is how Adobe XD looks like by default. As you can see, it's a very basic interface, but it's very functional. It allows you to perform the most common actions with just a few clicks. At the very top of the screen, we have the Apple menu bar. From here, you can do all the basic stuff like saving and opening files, exporting assets, and pretty much every sort of operation that is available on Adobe XD. I suggest you explore all of these options, but in this course I will teach you all the most common shortcuts so that you will rarely have to use this menu. So below the menu bar we have a top horizontal panel right here. Um, the main thing to pay attention here is the design and prototype switch. As you might guess, when you are in design mode you can make all those changes impacting the visual side of your project, while when you are in prototype mode you'll be able to give life to your designs and create an interactive prototype by connecting the screens all together. We will see this later on. Moving to the right side of the screen, we have the zoom drop-down menu, which I personally never use, as we already have a zoom tool on the left side of the screen, and it works great. So I only have a quick look here to check what's the current zoom level, but I never change the zoom using this control. Then the little phone icon next to it enables the device preview feature, which allows you to preview your project on your mobile phone by using the Adobe XD app, which is available for both iOS and Android. This feature works really, really well, and it shows you exactly how your design will look on a real device. Then next to it, uh, we have a little play icon which allows you to preview your project directly on your computer. You can see anything at the moment because our project is empty, but we'll see this later on during the course. And finally, we have a share icon which allows you to share your prototype with your clients, co-workers or stakeholders in order to get direct feedback on it without having to go through emails or chat. On the left side of the screen we have our toolbar with all the tools available on Adobe XD. When you hover on each individual tool you can see a little letter in brackets which is the shortcut you're going to use to activate them. We'll use these shortcuts all the time so that it's going to be faster to access these tools. So we're going to start with the first tool on top, which is the Select tool, or letter V. This allows us to select any object on the screen and to move them around as we want. For example, I'm going to select our artboard because I want, for example, to change the feel. Then we have the Rectangle tool, which draws rectangles, obviously. Then we switch to the select tool. As you can see, I can select all of them and delete them. The ellipse tool, creating ellipses and circles. I'm gonna show you later how to draw perfect circles. The line tool, creating lines. Then we have the pen tool which is very useful to create custom shapes. Then the text tool, obviously, it's gonna be used all the time. You can create a single line of text or a text block like this, like a paragraph. And then we have the artboard tool which allows you to create new artboards on your canvas by selecting a list of devices available here on the right side. For example, if we want a tablet, Android here, that's what it does. If we want another iPhone, there it is. And then you can just click on the screen multiple times to create more. And then in the end we have the zoom tool, which enables us to zoom in, zoom out, we can use the mouse wheel to zoom all the way and then at the bottom we have symbols which is something we're gonna see later and explain a bit better what they are and the layers panel at the very end which is very important and we're gonna activate from now on here you're gonna see all the layers that you're gonna use all right, so now we're going to move to the right side of the screen and we're going to explore the options included in this panel here. We're going to start from the top where there's some alignment options. Let me show you very quickly what this can do. 
Let me zoom back in. Get rid of this. So if we create, let's say, three squares, we can select them all. And then by using this icon here, distribute horizontally, as you can see, there's an even space between them. Uh, the same applies if we do this, for example. And we click on this option here at the end. It's going to distribute them vertically. In terms of alignment, we can do this sort of operations. Click on the first one here, and they're all aligned at the top. You can do the same. Aligning at the bottom, and so on and so forth. The next feature up here is the repeat grid, which, as I previously mentioned, is one of the most amazing features in Adobe XD right now. I'm going to show you quickly what we can do with it. So we have a little shape here. We're going to click on repeat grid. And as you can see, some green handles are going to appear around the shape. And once you drag them, the shape, the rectangle will be repeated for as many times as you want. This feature will be incredibly useful when we're going to deal with layouts or list of repeatable objects. And it will be a great time saver. And we're going to see this later on in the course. The next set of features we're going to look at are the so-called Boolean operators, which you can find up here next to the repeat grid. Uh, let me show you very quickly what we can do, what we can do with it. I'm going to create two circles. So once we select them both and use the first option, which is the add option, as you can see, there's now only one shape as they've been combined. And now it's draggable and movable around, no problem. Now we're going to undo that, select them again, and use the second option, which is the subtract one. And as you can see, one circle has been subtracted from the other, other one. We have a sort of a moon here. So we're going to do the same and select the third option, which is the intersect one. And as you can see, only the intersection between the two circles has been kept. And as the last option, we're going to use the exclude overlap, which will delete the overlapping section between the two circles. So going back to our panel on the right, we're going to look at this section here, where you can have control over the size and the position of your objects on screen. I'm going to show you a little example. We're going to create a rectangle here. And as you can see on the right, uh, the width and height values are changing as I drag the rectangle. That's basically the value in pixels of its size. And once I design my rectangle, I can change from here the size by using the keyboard. And there's a little option here, a little lock. If you click on it, uh, it's called lock aspect. When you click on it, basically you can change only one side of the rectangle and the other side will adapt accordingly without changing the aspect of the of the rectangle. Next to the size values, we have the position values represented in X and Y coordinates. As you can see, we can move around the rectangle and these values will change. If we put it at the top left of the screen, coordinates are 0, 0 because that's where ideally the screen starts in our artboard. And then the last option right here is the orientation, which you can change directly from here. And the orientation of your shape will change. I never use that uh, because I'm just more comfortable at doing it from here directly with the mouse. It's just faster and more practical. And we're going to see this a lot during the course of the video. Next, we're going to look at the appearance section of our right panel. First option on top is the opacity slider where we can change the visibility of our objects on screen. Then when we have our rectangle selected, we're going to have this option here, which enables you to change the border radius of the rectangle. So if I put, let's say 20, for example, as you can see, all the radius radiuses have been changed to 20 pixels. I can change the radius individually in every corner. So let's say I want to change the, just the top left one and the bottom right one, that's the result. 
So the next option we have here on the right is the fill option. Thanks to this, you can change the fill of your shapes and objects. You can use the slider here to pick different colors and the other slider on the right controls the opacity. Also using the plus down here at the bottom, if you like a color you're using, you can add this color and use it later. You're gonna see these colors here on all the screens and artboards you're gonna create under the same file, which is pretty handy. Uh, aside from solid colors, you'll be able also to use gradients. So you have the bar here with the handles on the left, left and the right, you're gonna be able to change them. So moving back to solid colors, the last thing you can use here is the color picker which allows you to pick any color you see on the screen and it's gonna be reused in your shape and in the object that you're trying to change the color for. Moving at the bottom we have the border controls. As you can see here I can change the color and the size of the border of every object I have on screen. You can disable it if you want and also in this case you have a color picker allowing you to use any color on the screen. Then moving down we have the shadow option. So here from the X and Y options we can change the orientation of the shadow. As you can see with a positive X number I'm gonna see I'm gonna display a shadow on the right. With a negative number it's gonna appear on the left. And then with the Y axis it's gonna appear at the bottom with a positive number and on top with a negative number. This one here, the B value, is the blur value of the shadow. As you can see, it gets very solid if it's a low number and more blurry if you raise the number. And then from here, you can change the color of the shadow and its opacity. And moving down, we have the background blur, which is the last option in this panel. And we're going to see this later when we're going to design our application. Uh, for now, we're just going to skip it. Uh, it's usually you use this option with some background images. It's going to be clearer to explain with that. I think we're done here. We've seen all the options included in the interface. And see you on the next lecture. Mm -hmm.